how did Microsoft get a $22 billion contract with the US Army? The US Army is set to receive over 120,000 of Microsoft's military grade HoloLens AR goggles over the next 10 years. The first shipments are now underway, even after the deal saw multiple delays and a lot of controversy over whether a private tech company should be involved in a war. So what other private companies are involved in war? And how does the government decide which ones to award contracts to? Well, it's called an RFP. In this video, we're going to explain Microsoft's HoloLens contract, the biggest military contractors out there, the importance of RFPs to this process, and how you can download and customize a presentation we created to get started on your own RFP. If you wanna go straight to the presentation explainer, do so now. Microsoft's deal with the Army has been in the works for years. The first rumors that Microsoft was gonna get involved at the military was back in 2018 when there were talks of a deal with the Department of Defense to help increase the lethality of combat missions. After the DOD identified Microsoft for military procurement, Microsoft had to build these specialized goggles from the ground up to prove it could meet specifications and a bigger contract would be worthwhile. The heads-up display on Microsoft's goggles gives the wearer a bunch of information through an integrated audio-visual system, which can help soldiers identify structures, highlight moving objects, and even see through smoke. It looks a lot like a video game, if that video game involved real-world combat and real-world stakes. In 2021, after the Army liked what they saw from the modified AR goggles, Microsoft officially signed its upgraded multi-billion dollar contract to build a whole lot more. Now, the Army intends to use them for training and combat missions. The huge contract will require Microsoft to meet future production timelines and other qualifications. The government will have to evaluate whether or not the company is meeting its needs over time. This is not the first time that Microsoft has been involved in a big contract with the Department of Defense. Last year, the government requested proposals from Amazon, Google, and Microsoft on a new cloud contract worth over $10 billion. Amazon ultimately won the contract, but Microsoft forced the evaluators to redo their process when it claimed that its product was far superior to the competition. <sighs> Gotta admire that confidence. Microsoft is a true inspiration. It's still lost. The government awarded the contract to Amazon even after another round of evaluation. Next, these companies will duke it out for another five-year cloud contract worth $9 billion, with the award expected to be revealed this December. While these contracts sound like a lot of money, and they are, it's just a small portion of what the Department of Defense spends on defense contracts each year. In 2021 alone, the DoD spent over just $480 billion on contracts, most of which began with an RFP. An RFP, for those who don't know, is a request for proposal, which is a tool used by the government or an organization to list what it needs to complete a project and get business proposals from interested bidders. Defense contractors use the RFP process to see what the government needs and plan projects and funding accordingly. The majority of defense contracts, nearly 54%, go to supplies and equipment such as aircraft, ships, weapons, and parts. Research contracts lag behind at only 7% of defense contract spending. RFPs lead to a lot of competition between contractors who try to outbid each other by offering the cheapest and most effective services. The companies that received the most money from defense contracts last year were Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Raytheon. Just this month, Lockheed was awarded a contract worth over $7.5 billion for aircraft hardware, but that's nothing compared to its biggest deal yet, the most expensive contract in Defense Department history. A 60-year deal for the F-35 fighter jet worth a whopping $1 trillion. And guess what? After all of that, the deliveries of the F-35 were paused a few weeks ago due to the discovery that a single metal alloy was made in China and violated the Buy American Act. So how can you receive the best possible requests for your business? This presentation includes customizable RFP templates that will guide you through every step of the proposal process from setting expectations to evaluation and scoring. 
On average, a public sector RFP is 116 pages long, while a resulting proposal is 144 pages long. Responses to RFPs take companies a lot of time and effort, so creating RFPs that are well-written and concise is a sign of respect that will attract high-quality vendors and minimize wait times so your projects can get done sooner. Use these templates to trim the fat on your RFPs and drive home the most important aspects of your project and the goals that need to be met so that vendors know your expectations and can plan accordingly. Our RFP collection provides customizable charts which you can customize for any business need. Now, let me show you some of the top slides in the presentation. It's important to define your project goals and needs upfront. What are the key deliverables and what does your organization expect from potential bidders? Provide a brief project overview, including strategies, important team members, the cost, and the budget. Be sure to refer to this chart while you work on the rest of the RFP to ensure it contains all the key information to your project. Equally important are the qualifications that the bidders must have. Present this list to bidders so they know what documentation or other proof of experience to provide to your organization with their bid. This proof may come in the form of a physical or digital certificate, which can be specified in the list. This is a great way to assess core competencies and filter out bidders who may not have the qualifications necessary to complete the project. When bidders know in advance that they will be scored on whether their proposals are formatted correctly, it incentivizes them to make proposals in the format you request, which speeds up evaluation. Provide a scoring breakdown so bidders know exactly what you want. This scoring system helps both the bidders and the evaluators get on a level playing field and leads to a streamlined evaluation process. Scores can be separated according to the round they take place in, as proposals often go through multiple rounds of scoring. Here is where bidders can provide their cost breakdowns. This template can be supplied as an example within the RFP. This is where the literal bidding happens and potential vendors lay out their finances over the project lifespan. Each row is a separate deliverable and the chart lets you quickly compare proposal costs. Bidders should know the key deadlines of the RFP process, such as submission due dates and when the review process will end. Make sure the deadlines leave enough time for vendors to plan a response, and the more detailed your RFP is, the more time you should give them. RFPs should establish a clear vision for a potential partnership, from implementation all the way to ongoing support. And remember, you can download and customize this RFP presentation for all your proposal needs to save time and hours of work. Now, go check out our video on how to build a project plan for additional tools and insights on how to incorporate costs and timelines into your RFP. Thanks for watching.